Hey, can I work in your lab and do science research? Uh, maybe. Have you ever worked in a lab before? Nope. Uh, okay. Are you at least over the age of 18? Nope, but I turned 16 on Tuesday. Got it. Do you have any relevant skills like data analysis or coding in a language like Python? Like the snake? Not exactly, but you know it's going to take me a lot of extra time to teach you all the skills that you're missing so you could actually do something useful in the lab, right? So are you at least able to pay me for all the extra work I'm going to have to do with you? Nope. Yeah, that's not gonna work out. Do you wanna learn how to really get science research while you're still in high school? Sure. Look, the biggest reason why science research mentors reject students who apply to work with them is because they're dead weight in a laboratory setting. When you're under the age of 18, you can't physically touch things that are wet or dangerous in a lab because of insurance and liability issues. So the only thing you actually can do is data analysis. So if we wanna fix the situation for you, the first thing we need to do is get you some actual training in coding in languages like Python so that if you or to come into the lab, at least you could make it easier on your mentor by doing some of the data analysis they don't want to have to do themselves. Got it. But how do I learn how to do that? Should I take a course? Those can be pretty expensive. Actually, it's totally free. You can go on edX and take a course called CS50, which is Harvard's Intro to Python, and that should be more than enough for you to get a background in coding that would be useful in a laboratory setting. Okay, but then how do I get in contact with the professors? That's easy. Most universities make their faculty's emails available to the public. So all you have to do is find the universities that are in your area and then go onto the department websites for those universities in the departments where you'd want to do research. So for example, like a biology department or a physics department, and then go pull the names and emails of all the professors that you maybe would want to work with. You're going to want to aim to get at least 100 to 200 of these people on a list and then do a little bit of background work with them so that you can reference their research in your emails. Okay, that's easy. But then what should I say in the email? Your email needs to be short and sweet. You want to open by telling them that you're a high school student looking to volunteer in their lab for summer research, that you have some background coding in Python so you'll actually be useful to do data analysis, and then you want to include a paragraph or so explaining why their research is something that matters to you. Then you want to ask them at the end to refer you to any of their colleagues who might be a better fit if they can't take you for some reason. And then you have to email that to at least 100 and ideally more than 100 professors at different universities that might be a good match for you. If you actually do it with that many professors, it's almost guaranteed that one of them is going to offer you a spot. Wow, that's way easier than I thought it was going to be. Why did no one tell us about this before? Well, there is this one guy on TikTok that's been telling these kids for years that all they have to do is follow that simple three-step process and they can get volunteer science research every summer for free. So as long as they listen to him, they'll be fine, right?